Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to The Nest. It's July 23rd, 2020, and we're streaming live with participants from Africa, North America, Europe, and around the world. For those of you joining for the first time, I'm Jim Chu in San Francisco, California, and the goal here on The Nest is to connect entrepreneurs and frontier markets with angel investors worldwide. We stream live every Thursday, and all episodes are recorded and available on our website, findthenest.org. Today, we have an all-female cast, two inspiring entrepreneurs with transformative businesses in Sub-Saharan Africa, and three angels, all hailing currently from Cape Town, beautiful Cape Town. We'll hear all about them in a second, but before that, I have a few quick announcements. So next week on July 30th, we'll host a joint session in partnership with 1000 Alternatives focusing on East African startups. The week after that, on August 6th, we will host a session with IntelliCap. And then on August 13th, we'll be heading to Nigeria for a session focused on Nigerian startups. So join us for all of those sessions at 9 a.m. San Francisco time, 5 p.m. London time, and hope to see you there. So now with that, let's cover some technical tips and get us started. So for those of you in the audience, we want you to be part of the discussion. This is an interactive forum and we've left it open on purpose for questions and comments. Uh, so use that chat box, talk to others watching the show, make comments, ask questions. And in the meantime, use that chat to introduce yourself. Tell us who you are, what you do, which country you're from, why you're here on the show, and of course, answer the poll that's up right now. And please don't forget to use that mute button if you're not speaking. So that's pretty much it. Let's get going. Now over to the angels. Sarah, welcome back to The Nest. This is your second time on The Nest. Would you like to start with introductions? Thank you so much, Jim. It's fantastic to be back. Um, thank you for what you're doing in creating this opportunity uh, for entrepreneurs across the continent. It's an amazing... Well, glad that you're a part. Thank you. So I am Sarah Dusik, uh, the general managing partner of Enigma Ventures, which is a venture capital fund investing in women-led businesses across uh, SADAC, so the 16 countries that make up SADAC in Southern Africa. Great. And um, Enigma, now that fund was started fairly recently, right? In, in this last year? Oh, we're about six months old, yes. Six months so old. So how many investments have you guys made since? We've made two in the two. last six months. We've closed two and we've got six others in the in the hopper. So we're- and, and potentially two more today, right? Hopefully two more today, <laughs> who knows? Great. Well, wonderful. Um, thank you for joining. Hannah? Thank you very much, uh, Jim. Uh, good evening, everyone. Very happy to be here. My name is Hannah. Uh, I am a principal at Southwest Capital, which is one of the largest uh, private equity house um, on the continent. We manage close to $1 billion, uh, but I'm also a partner at Dazzle Angels, which is the first South African angel fund led by women and only investing in uh, women-led tech businesses uh, in the country. Uh, I have also started to expand my uh, angel investment activity on the rest of the continent. Um, and as I teach, um, I, as I'm acting as a lecturer at the African Leadership Academy, I have the opportunity to advise a lot of entrepreneurs on the continent on various topics, including finance, operations, commercial strategies, growth, and obviously fundraising. So super excited to be here tonight and uh, hopefully uh, one or two entrepreneurs will be uh, convincing enough for, for, for us to, to have a look. Great. And I, um, we were just talking earlier that you started, you're now the host of the Francophone version of The Nest. 
Yes, actually, yes, definitely uh, host and uh, sort of co-producing the francophone uh, African version of the nest uh, in French. Uh, and every two to three weeks, uh, changing countries. We had an edition in Togo Bena. Uh, last night was in Senegal, where, uh, again, the episode was very successful, very well attended. Uh, and it's quite uh, moving uh, to see a lot of French-speaking Africans uh, saying for the first time we have the opportunity to actually learn and understand understand how to pitch, how to improve our businesses, how to raise money. Yeah, so it's quite, a, quite an interesting uh, journey. Gotcha. So we were just talking earlier that uh, the English version of the Nest has raised quite a bit of money. So I think the Francophone version needs to start to catch up now. Uh, you know, French speaking people talk a lot. It takes a bit more time, <laughs> but at the end of the day, yes, hopefully the, the money will start uh, to, to roll as well. Wonderful. Thank you again for coming back for a second time. And then we also have a new angel on the show, Kindle Buritz. Um, please, let's hear from you. Hi, Michael. Thanks so much for, um, or Jim, thank you so much for, for inviting me on. Some people call me Michael, um, it's okay. I know, sorry. I put, yeah. Um, so, so I do investing exclusively in Africa. I've invested um, primarily either on behalf of funds, um, I'm an advisor now to financial sector deepening Africa investments, or as a fund manager or being part of a, a fund. Um, but I've started doing a lot more angel investing and it's a lot more fun doing that than um, because you can invest in whatever you want. Um, and, and I really enjoyed that. So I've done investments in FinTech, machine learning, health tech, um, med tech and logistics. So I am, um, I'm really enjoying my my role as as an angel, and then I advise other companies that are looking to expand um, into new markets or looking to raise capital. Great, wonderful. Well, thank you all three for joining the show. And I think we might have the results of the poll. Can we uh, put that up? Wonderful. It looks like we have a pretty good representation from various parts of the world, a lot in Africa, and uh, a bunch from North America as well. And a few from Europe, wonderful. And even um, a person from Asia, so wonderful. Great. All right, so let's uh, head over to the uh, presenters. We have um, Ella and Elahor from uh, Code Lynn and Powered by People. I believe, uh, Elahor, you're going to get started with the first presentation, but before we do that, uh, let's go over some of the rules. Each, will you, each of you will have five minutes, no more than five minutes to present, and then another 15 to 20 minutes for questions and hopefully some discussions on a deal. We will cut you off at five minutes, so please help us respect the time so that we can have a good discussion. All right, with that, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and I'm gonna hand it over to Elahor, who can, you can share your screen. Ready when you are. Okay, <laughs> go ahead. Should I start? Yes, please. Okay, cool. Hello, everyone. I am Ella Thomas, um, CEO of Codelin, and today I'll be sharing with you the Codelin story. Having worked in the tech space, my co-founders and I discovered a common problem. Recruiting programmers can be hectic and time-consuming. It takes an average of three months to fill a key tech role. Meet Esther, the HR at Union Bank. During the COVID lockdown, she was tasked to urgently fill up roles in her IT department. Her challenges were where to find skilled programmers, how to verify their quality, and the long time to hire. But not anymore. Using our talent marketplace, um, Esther can easily source for talent and manage her applications in one platform in the nick of time. Our testing tool allows her to seamlessly verify the coding skills of potential hires. We were able to help Esther hire 12 engineers during the COVID lockdown. Of course, we're solving the global problem and um, these are some of our um, closest competitors. But the good news is we know what they have for breakfast. Stilton and offers in places um, programmers to local opportunities while Jobam and Van Hack and Upwork is focused on general professionals. Comments on the other hand um, connects freelancers to um, opportunities, short-term gigs, and remote opportunities. But we are unique in the sense that we offer vetting, a testing platform to verify the coding skills of programmers, thereby reducing the risk of a bad hire by 
Our processes are automated for speed, which reduces the time to hire from three months to two weeks, cutting down recruitment time by 80%. We are also addressing the niche market and creating impact by connecting African programmers to global opportunities. I'm sure you agree with me that programming language is the only global language. We are currently in two markets, Ghana and Nigeria, and the size of this market is estimated at 38 million US dollars. We bill our clients a 15% commission on the programmer's annual gross salary, which is the recruitment fee. And based on this, we have estimated a projected revenue of 7.1 million USD with a 75% margin by 2024. Codeline started in Q4 2018, and like most successful marketplaces, our focus was on the supply side talent acquisition and product development. In Q4 of 2019, we shifted focus to the client side. And um, by the end of this year, um, specifically in November, we'll be licensing our testing platform, our in-house testing platform to companies in order for them to vet their candidates for a fee. This will be an additional source of revenue to the company. We are currently in Ghana and Nigeria, but we are looking to scale and expand across key regions, starting with Kenya and France. Now, why France, you may ask. In 2019, Poll Employee reported that 50,000 IT positions in France were left on field. So that's an opportunity. Um, I, myself and my co-founders are very passionate about the problem of unemployment. So we are looking to scale into other roles um, starting Q4 um, 2024. So far, we have acquired 9,000 programmers. We have filled up 58 um, job positions and we have realized 46,000 um, USD in revenue. These are some of our clients and partners. To mention a few, ST Cloud and Rincho based in Paris. We have our programmers from Ivory Coast working remotely for them. We have one of our programmers um, from Cameroon working with Wikipedia team on a project. And of course, you've heard the Union Bank success story. We are gladly supported by IBM, Microsoft, and Lagos State to for the talent side. And Station F, the biggest incubator in the world, will be assisting us as we plan to enter into the French market. Meet Team Codlin. We are mentored by Tosin Faneru, and she heads the Lagos Innovate Project at um, Lagos State Employment Trust Fund. And um, myself, Elo, I have an MSc in Systems Engineering with a major in Artificial Intelligence. Dexter and Felicia are seasoned software engineers, and Dennis is also a seasoned cybersecurity engineer. Together, we have over 28 years experience working across sales, recruitment, and software engineering. We're looking to raise 300,000 USD um, for 15% of our company. Funds will be put into sales and marketing, company expansion, and staffing. We are, we are also interested in speaking to partners who believe in our mission. Thank you. Fabulous. Uh, right on time. Perfect. Well, I guess we'll just hand it straight over to the angels. Who'd like to start? Hi, Hannah here. Thank you very much, Eleho, uh, for your presentation. Amazing. Um, I just have some questions regarding your revenue generation model. At this stage, it sounds like you only have uh, one uh, revenue stream, which is a commission uh, that you take on the placement of an engineer. So I have two questions here. Uh, how do you ensure that the company is not going to lie uh, to you about uh, the salary they are going to pay to, to, to the candidates uh, to, to obviously decrease the, the amount of money they have to, to pay to you? Um, and the second question is, um, are you thinking about, uh, about new revenue, um, you know, like models or new ideas that could continue to, to generate uh, to generate more money for, for your company. Um, and sorry, third question, you mentioned that some of your programmers are not necessarily hired by the company, but they are working on dedicated IT projects. So how do you um, get money from that? What's a revenue model? Okay. So um, how it works for, I'll address the first question. So that's how do I guarantee, um, ensure that the companies don't lie to us. So our recruitment fee is um, our recruitment fee is a success fee. That's what we call it. So it is after they have presented an offer to the candidates that we get paid. So based on the offer on the offer letter of the employee, 
that is where um, how we write our invoice for payment. So we've not had issues with um, companies um, paying or agreeing less with us and pitching. And, and um, even at that, we post every job on our platform. So it's based on the salary we relate with the engineers, right? So we've not really had that challenge so far. Now, in terms of the second question, um, models of revenue. So I'd like to emphasize, uh, based on our roadmap, now, um, we follow the strategy of most successful marketplaces like um, Airbnb, um, Lyft, Uber, and the likes, right? So our first year of operation was based on two key things. We had two key, two key KPIs. Um, firstly, to focus on the supply side because the only way we could go to clients and say, we have engineers for your position is we, if we actually have the talent in, in huge numbers, right? And also product development. So we started pushing for um, sales based on this current model in December, 2019. So we started pushing for sales, uh, I'm saying the past um, six months so far, right? So based on that, we've realized the revenue we have. So for new business model, yes. Um, I, I mentioned our testing platform in Q4 2020. So this is a tool we've developed um, over the year and we use in-house. We are currently working on a patent for it. It's a proprietary software solution, right? So we have realized that there's a market for it. We are currently running a pilot with one of our clients. Um, to test the platform. And we gave him a business model that is, I think for him, are testing with 250 software engineers um, that he has, right? So if this works successfully well, um, based on the model we are building, we are going to launch this in um, starting Q4 of 2020. And then um, we've had clients, we've worked with international clients and some of them or most of them have um, mentioned that they would want us to manage payroll right, when their engineers are working remotely. So we also see that as an additional source of income um, so far. Then going fast forward to um, Q4 2024, well, we see a great opportunity generally um, looking at our competitors like Upwork. Um, they've been running for 20 years and they address different other non-tech rules. So that's something we want to explore. Then, sorry, the last question. Could you please repeat it? Um, but I think you have kind of addressed it. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm happy we'll be getting the, the answer. No, you, you mentioned that some of your engineers are working on oh, okay. yes, yes, yes. projects. Okay. How do you call those projects and okay. how is it for you? Or is it profitable for you to do that? Okay, yeah. so that's also part of the, um, we still do the commission-based um, um, model but on in this case for short-term projects for example if the engineer is to work for three months and we build it on a pro, pro rata basis right then if the engineer is handling a project and they are billing right. them at once we take a commission so it's still a similar commission approach thank you okay thank you any of the Hello. others any other angels have questions or comments uh, otherwise happy to oh please go ahead I was just going to say, Ella Hall, that was an excellent pitch. That might have been the best pitch I have heard in a long while, and I'm hearing a lot these days. So you should be very proud. That was an excellently executed pitch. Um, you hit all the, the relevant sort of pieces of the puzzle. Um, you clearly outlined your business. You clearly outlined the opportunity. You outlined your potential growth and you made it a clear ask for funding. So very well done, very good job. Um, I'm very interested uh, in this business. Um, we're just investing in a, um, another recruitment company. So this, is, um, this would be a very interesting sort of parallel um, investment for us. So that's interesting. So I'd love to dig deeper with you um, in your business model and take a look at this with you um, at greater length offline after we're done. Um, my question for you right now is where are you, where are you based? Um, and talk me through the, you said, you said you're operating in sort of Nigeria and Ghana. So is that just that developers that are on the platform are in Ni Nigeria and Ghana or the clients? So maybe just talk me through the location piece. So I wrap my brain a bit around that. Okay, so um, to do that, um, we are currently based in, um, so we started just to go over the, um, our, our journey, we started after an accelerator program in um, Ghana, 
right? Okay. So like I mentioned, four of us, we have a background in engineering. We met and we discovered that we had seen a, a similar problem and we had the expertise to solve a problem. Like they always say, engineers, uh, only engineers can identify a good engineer, right? So it's a very Pan-African team. I'm from Nigeria. Dexter is from Ivory Coast. Felicia okay. and Dennis are from Kenya. But we are, um, the co-founders are working on the project full-time and we all live in Ghana, right? So um, in um, mid last year, last Q3, we expanded to Nigeria. Now we expand to a country based on data. So in terms of the talent, because we spent um, about a year acquiring this talent, we have 9,000 currently over 15 African countries, right? So for them, our product is a SaaS product. It's just as easy as they come in to sign up. So we, we, did, um, we looked into our data and we have them across African countries, but we have a lot of them from um, most of our countries because we had community before we started the company. So we have a lot of them from Nigeria, from um, Ghana, from Kenya, and from Ivory Coast, then from other regions, um, Namibia and the other countries, right? So um, in terms of the talent, it's for now we have them across 15 African countries. Then for clients, um, so for the clients, we have, I would say, 85% of our clients from Africa. So now digging deep into Africa, we have them from Ghana, from Nigeria, from, um, we've worked with a client from South Africa and also from Kenya, right? Now from outside of Africa, we have clients like Digital Ocean. Digital Ocean is based in the US, right? And we have S-Tech Cloud and Rinchio from Paris. So my co-founder that is um, from Ivory Coast was in France um, in February to do some detailed market research for about three weeks, right? So he was able to get us some clients from that market. And we see a great opportunity for our francophone talent in that region, right? Mm -hmm. And um, we also have Wikipedia. That's one of our notable clients. We have one of our engineers from Cameroon working with them. So I would say for the client base, it's 85% um, African and the remaining 15% from, I would say, mostly Europe. Okay. Yeah. Talk me through how, how you think about acquiring clients. Um, how are you, how do you think you can scale your ability to um, add more clients to your portfolio? Because obviously the success of the platform depends on your ability to grow two streams, oh. your pool of engineers, which you seem to have done a really good job of if you've got 9,000 of them already on the platform, which is a huge number. So that's awesome. How are you thinking about um, scaling your ability to Put them in jobs effectively mm -hmm. to have clients okay great question so um what we our focus is on well for so i personally i head the nigerian department so and what has worked different markets have different strategies that work for them right so in nigeria direct sale has been very effective before of course covid so meeting clients like for example union bank we had to have because it's a big establishment we had a series of meetings with them right so that has worked and, and also um, online, I would say online sales. So using post and paid ads and even organically, right? Reaching out to targeting specific um, clients um, online. We use LinkedIn ads, which has proven very effective. But so it's still a similar model in Ghana, in Ghana as well, compared to Nigeria too. And we have um, partners that also um, help us um, with this search. So um, speaking outside of um, outside of Africa, to mention um, our move into France, Station F is the biggest um, incubator in the world. They are housing over a thousand um, startups, right? So when we started, we focused, we, we started with startups because it was easier for us to reach key decision makers, right? So even um, looking at our business model, startups abroad even offer much more than some companies over here. So um, we got into the Station F program um, last month, right? So we couldn't travel this, um, we're supposed to travel this month. We couldn't travel because of travel ban. So we are shifting that to January. So getting to France, that is already a market for us, right? We are gonna be in the incubator for a period of time. So we can address that from that approach. So um, this will help us acquire clients faster, right? And we're also looking at working with key strategic partners in this region. I'd like to mention Africa Works. Africa Works is one of our partner in Berlin. So they are trying to reach out to us because um, they are focused on African talent and we are become, we are their pipeline for hiring, for placing, um, offering them um, talents from Africa. So they place the candidates with their clients. So we have a form of revenue share agreement 
between them. So we've been noticing a lot of interest coming from um, Germany from that angle. So far, we've um, been reached by three recruitment agencies. These are key recruitment agencies. So we are like their partners for tech hiring from Africa. So we also see that partnerships like this will help us um, go far and climb this. Okay, great. Thank you. Jim, just as a matter of um, process, is it okay if I ask questions one by one and about how much Absolutely. time? Absolutely, so we have another 10 minutes left. Okay, great. For, for questions, up to 10 minutes. Okay. Great. Ella Hort, very nice to meet you. Um, I did a little bit of snooping around on the web to learn a bit more about you. Um, oh, thank you. <laughs> And it's clear to me that you really love learning and education. I'd like to understand a little bit more what motivated you really to start this business. Okay, I think that's a very interesting question. So um, in 2016, um, I, so I have a background in engineering, like I mentioned. So I'd worked in, I've worked with, um, with Jumia, that's Africa's top e-commerce platform in sales. So I have some experience in sales, across sales and recruitment and um, software development. So in 2016, I facilitated a training um, in collaboration with Lagos State government and um, um, one of the tech, key tech players in Lagos State. So the aim of the training was to get um, 100 graduates trained on software development. So I was more like a trainer. I was handling about um, 25 students at the time. So it was a detailed three month intensive training from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And the end goal was that the government promised that at the end of three months, every single person will be placed on a job, right? That they will offer them jobs, right? So we had some candidates that quit their job to go for this training. So I watched them, I watched candidates move from zero level to becoming full stack engineers. I watched their strive. I saw when they were facing challenges and they were sad. I saw when they succeeded and they were excited, you know, but well, like, they would always say, oh, like, it's expected. At the end of the training, we had over 70% success rate. And um, I would say the sad part was that only about 5% of the candidates were placed on jobs. And those 5% mm -hmm. percent were candidates that had connection to government officials. So it was mm -hmm. really sad. And the candidates came to me and they were complaining. And I felt really bad that, okay, this is not a problem I can solve, right? I mean, it's not really something I could solve at the time. So fast forward to 2017, when my co-founders and I were brainstorming on ideas, I was like, okay, fine, this is a great thing to do. We shared the ideas together. We did some couple of pivots before we got to this point. So for me, um, I always have something I say. It is, I believe that learning to code can be quite a journey and anyone who has learned how to code should be rewarded their dream job. Wonderful, wonderful. That's a, that's a great motivation. Um, I have a question around competitive advantage. Um, okay. And I, I actually did see a presentation that you had done um, where you were comparing your company against your, your, your competitors. And the two outstanding um, items that you really focused on in, in terms of where you really excelled was one on price yeah. and the other on certification. Yeah. But I do wonder sometimes if price competition is, is sustainable. So would you agree with me that those are the where you excel? Um, and if not, what is your real competitive advantage? Okay, so um, price, um, price is really thing, right? <laughs> Depending on which market you're addressing. So um, for, I would say we are, we offer value for money. I'll put it that way, right? So we actually offer value for money um, because for us, the co-founders and I are passionate about what we do. I can say that we are affordable compared to some of our competitors or the major players in the space, right? But in terms of how we are uh, different distinctively, I would say these are three key areas um, I'd like to mention. So unlike most of our competitors, um, it, is more like, um, it is more like matching candidates to um, jobs, right? Just the matching, mm -hmm. right? Based on skills. But we go deeply. We go deeply further into it by doing, um, by verifying the coding skills of the candidates. So I mentioned um, our testing tool. So these are proprietary software solution, um, mm -hmm. which we developed in-house that allows us to test the skill of a programmer. So a typical example is if you are a financial institution and you are hiring candidate A to um, your company, these candidates will most likely be tested on 
a, a we call this project based assessment a, a short um project based assessment they'll be up they'll be expected to build a project on our id on a platform that speaks to the areas um the areas that we, they will be most likely employed to work on so for example maybe api integration on payment and every other thing so that is one of our key value and while we did our market research speaking to clients this has always been a challenge almost all of them has had a bad hire before and for engineering it's quite different you might not know that this this engineer is bad until he has been with you for like two months right when you can't deliver on the project and that's time wasted right that's um, time loss that's productivity wasted so we are trying to um reduce this mistake and um, with our testing platform verifying that the candidate has the right skills and um, by so doing we are cutting down the risk of a bad hire by 70 percent now our processes are automated as i mentioned earlier based on um, our market research it takes a minimum it takes an average of three months to fill a key tech rule right so because our process is automated that's why we took some time building a solid project so on our platform companies can come and post job immediately they post the job they, they see recommendations right um they can manage the application we have an applicant tracking system they can manage the candidate's application they can test the candidate using our testing platform and then they can even present an offer so it's a holistic product right so this way we are speeding up the recruitment process cutting down recruitment time to two weeks we've done some hires in one week before right so it, it can be as slow as that and of course well for us um being africans we see a great potential in africa because um africa has according to a report by un over 70 percent of the population africa is the youngest youth population right so we see we see a great potential here, even though we are starting with engineering now because we have the expertise, we believe that we can solve it at this point, but we see this growing into something big and we see this scaling into other sectors, right? So for us, we are creating opportunities for Africa. If there's a huge population of youth in Africa, how can mm. we better help them get jobs? And then it's programming language. Python is the same in Asia. Python is the same in, in America, in different parts of the world. So they can still compete with their counterparts in any part of the world and deliver on a project. So there's a couple of questions from the audience around competition and uh, especially on where you plan to scale to. But, you know, um, we heard a little bit about um, your competitive advantage, but more directly, what prevents another company to do what you're doing? You're still fairly small, so you don't have the network effect yet. So somebody can come in right now and, and, and replicate a lot of what you're putting together. So what's, where's your moat? What's your defense strategy there? Great question. So um, I would like to um, take it a bit back to the team, right? Um, for us, um, like I mentioned, this is a Pan-African team. So we have Anglophone West Africa, Francophone West Africa, and East Africa represented. So part of our strongest um, selling point is our community. So we're able to get to 9,000 um, engineers. Even most of our computers have not gotten this number. We're able to get to 9,000 engineers because we were, I personally was running a community before I started coding. And it's the, it's the same is the case for Dexter and Felicia. So we have a community around us before we started, or we've had a community around us before we started coding. So when we launched, it was as easy as pushing our platform to our community and saying, okay, this is what we are doing, and um, you people should sign up. So we see that our ability to scale can be um, really very fast because of our ground experience. We are available, we understand the market, I would say maybe better than the competitors, right? Especially those that are not local competitors because most of them that are not local competitors might have the funds to push this faster, right? So I would say that is one of our key, key um, advantage. Then in terms of our testing platform, our platform as here, we can brag that we are the first African company to build something like that. I've not seen till date any African com company that has built such. So we are doing a patent um, um, we are working on the patent, which should cover us for, I think, a minimum of 10 years for the platform. Gotcha. So and there's a comment from the audience, just very quick, sorry about that. We're coming from the audience on that, which is, you know, your, your brand named uh, US and, and European corporate clients is a pretty good name list uh, from Jonathan Levine here. And so there, there aren't that many uh, frontier market uh, versions of this that, um, that uh, have been successful in engaging that. So that's, that's the comment. I'm sorry, go ahead. 
Yeah. No, yeah, I had a question regarding the, the uniqueness of your um, vetting tool and how sophisticated and technolo technical it is, but you answered in the fact that you're, you're working on a patent, so that's a very, very good point. Uh, can you talk very briefly about the operational cost a little bit, how, like, what are the, the maintenance costs associated to those platform, and uh, when do you think you will see a path to, to profitability, because you, you quoted companies like uh, Uber for instance as a as a model but i think in terms of profitability uh, yeah, it's a bit uh, tricky so what what's your and i just have to say we're starting to run out of time so if you can answer that very quickly i would love to hear from the angels on their thoughts on um, and just one it's okay jim one complimentary question which is how many placements until you're profitable mm, good question okay great so um taking um anna's question i'll try to um wrap it up so maintenance maintenance cost is really um really low tech because we spend on tech infrastructure which is um cloud engineering for the testing platform so it depends on how many candidates are how many candidates we test so it's a unit um is we calculate it based on unit so to test one candidate it will cost us uh, based on our calculation a minimum of two dollars so it can be as as low as two dollars then the business model we are currently testing with um with the um, client I mentioned on pilot, pilot is a $5,000 um, $5, fee, licensing fee to test about 500 candidates, right? So our cost can be that low in terms of tech. Then another area where we feel we might spend a lot is for sales, um, for building our sales team, because the more um, sales people we have, the more we can expand. Um, sorry, your question again, Kindle. Just how, how, many, how many placements until you become profitable? Profitable, okay, placement. great. So, Yes, yes. So currently we've done 58 and we, based on our calculation, we should break even in one year with 311 placements. 311. Great question. Great. Well, so now over to the angels, what, what are your thoughts? Is this uh, something you guys are interested in? From my perspective, I mean, I think it's a very interesting business. And, you know, I did some sort of asking around before and you've come highly recommended. Um, Elahor, I, I um, have invested in Superfluid Labs as an angel. So you know where one recommendation came from. Um, um, I, I'd like to speak some more. I'd, I'd love to, to talk some more and learn a little bit more about the business. Um, and I like the impact perspective in terms of job creation. So I, I, I'm interested. Thank you. Um, Hannah here. Um, I still have some questions, uh, indeed, in terms of uh, competition and and how um, you know um, you you can defend your, your business model. But definitely, I think uh, you you have got something here that is quite attractive. And I know uh, two 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 potential founders based in Nigeria would be interested in this kind of opportunity. So I would definitely make their introductions. Thank you. So, Successful uh, due diligence post uh, production. Okay. Thank you. And I'm, as I said, Elaho, I'm super interested. I think this could be a really interesting um, investment for us. So I'm definitely interested to chat more. Fabulous. Well, it sounds like um, great results from, from the Angel crew. And um, we actually did a quick little poll from the audience as well. Can we put that up really quickly? So it looks like um, the audience agrees with you. There's quite a bit of interest all around um, in potentially investing. And I think from, from our side, untapped, um, maybe not as investors, but uh, we'd certainly be uh, interested as a customer. We do quite a bit of IT work throughout Africa. And I'm, a, I'm convinced that having developers who understand the local context helps tremendously. So I'll be coming to you as a potential customer and hopefully uh, we could find some talent through Codelin. Thank you. Great. Well, thank you very much for that presentation. Congratulations then, for getting okay. some uh, great interest from the angels and wish you all the best of luck. Thank you. <laughs> Wonderful. Great. Well, thank so you on so that note, um, congratulations for um, fabulous presentation. And um, I, my team and I will get back in touch and for both Elhor and Ella, and uh, pull together some follow-up calls so that hopefully we can see something happen. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate it. Thank you so Great. much. Thank you so much, Shala. Thank you.
Yeah. Well, I want to thank everybody for joining this call and uh, for joining this week. And just as a reminder, we do have uh, next week some fabulous uh, new shows with uh, great partners. July 30th, next week, we are partnering with 1,000 Alternatives for a show focused on East Africa. And August 6th, we have a show focused uh, on East Africa as well with IntelliCamp, mostly Kenya. And then on the 13th of August, we will go, be going to Nigeria in partnership with Lofty Inc. So I hope you come back, hope, to join, hope you can join us, and we'll see you back here again in a week. Thank you.